In regards of uh, Two Losses Spookies, I think that uh, it is ultimately a show created by two queer people. It's Anna and I. Uh, and uh, inevitably, uh, that sentiment will come through. I think, I think of Anna's character, Fati, who is not, uh, her sexuality is not necessarily explored, but she is, I don't know, she's a, she's a queer icon, I, I feel like. I mean, she was created and is played by a queer person um, who, uh, I don't think there are, there aren't many shows create, created and, and written start to finish by queer people, you know, like, um, so we're, 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 we're proud of that. Um, and, uh, of course the character I play is uh, more blatantly and obviously queer. Um, and campiness has to do a lot, a lot to do with it. And, uh, uh, it's and and about that project it's uh queer not only because of who wrote it and who are playing them and who the characters are but also because it's odd because it's it's uh it's queer but it but it ain't it, it's not love simon you know it's not uh it's not explaining anything to anyone um so I, I'm, I'm proud of that. But in, uh, to your question about what Bond was for me, I think um, you know, like I, as a kid was always, I felt um, drawn to and uh, represented by almost exclusively like non-human characters. Uh, I think Pinocchio was uh, like a, a, a hero of mine. I think that there was something to the journey of uh, a non-human longing to be real. Uh, um, I, I dressed up as Pinocchio at least a couple Halloweens and I, I, I tell my mom that I wanted to be a real boy you know, uh, and there's something to that, to like the, um, cause I, it, now in, you know, that I've had so much time in my hands and I've been like watching like pretty much a movie a day, uh, again, like if it's, I am mostly drawn to protagonists that are robots, uh, AIs, holograms, ghosts. Uh, and I think that there's something to, um, feeling like you are not from here, feeling like you are uh, an other, yearning to have what everyone else is born with. Uh, and I, I feel like in, in my case specifically, uh, the, uh, um, there's the immigration component of it, of feeling like uh, in college, feeling like, oh, I can't take I, even though I'm really broke, I can't take a job as a waiter because the government won't allow me. Uh, so it's almost like that mermaid, like, oh, I came to earth, but I don't have a voice sort of, uh, uh, like there's all these like rules and you're like, you, you, you just, you just long to have what everyone else has. And, um, but I, I, you know, I've been, I've been, uh, uh, an immigrant for a decade, but most of my life I haven't been because I was living where I'm from and, and there, uh, it did really feel like, um, yeah, like there was something to like the joy and the happiness found in being like a non-human, uh, that felt, uh, that now in retrospect seems like, like it was informed by that. And my, my otherness as a kid, I, I feel like a lot of it, uh, was potentially my queerness. But also, like, for the longest time, I was just like, uh, um, it felt like my atheism was the otherness. It felt like like that was like like the number one thing. It, it just felt like a combination of things uh, being queer included that that kept me like from a distance, being like, 
like Pinocchio. Were, were you, maybe if you, if you felt like you were pretty aware of your otherness and were you acutely aware of like, that is exactly why you like Pinocchio or was that kind of, did that no, take no. some retrospect, no, I guess? No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. uh, in retrospect, it, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've, I was always drawn to like secondary characters also uh, because it truly felt like as an other, you're just like not the protagonist, you know? Right, right. Uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, I, I've, 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 I've brought this up to death, but like, yeah, just like, why was I so into Daisy Duck? Uh, and uh, I think that it, it was ultimately because she's a sort of like forgotten in a corner, right? She's a she's a she's a blank canvas. Um, and and I think that's why we're drawn to Kemp, maybe, right? Because it's like weird and off center, and uh, uh, and there's something about it not being for everyone that's uh, that's appealing too. And the blank canvas thing is interesting, but there would always be these little hints of like, well, she she does have her own world. We're just not seeing it at all. <laughs> yeah, we're just not seeing it at all. You just don't get to see it because no one wants to see it. And that, that's the feeling. Yeah, what what's like, <laughs> what were, I can't even think having grown up watching all of this Disney stuff, what were Daisy's like, who is, who is Daisy <laughs> as a duck? Like, what are her defining characteristics? <laughs> Who was Daisy as a duck? I don't think that Disney ever cared to answer that question. I think that she was a wife and girlfriend to a difficult character, and that already tells you a lot, right? Uh, <laughs> she's like, she is a duck drawn to a difficult duck uh, who is there supporting him. Uh, and um, I have revisited uh, media that has Daisy Duck and her personality shifts from decade to decade in a way that it tells me that they're not committed to anything but uh, a thread is that she's like a nag is that she's sort of like uh, I saw one like sort of recent that uh, where Mickey and Mimi just want to go on a date and Daisy can't catch a hint that she's not invited <laughs> and it, she's just like uh, yeah um and there's something to her being her color being like purple that's interesting to me because purple is not pink purple is is sort of like uh mysterious and um over, over there, right? Pink is the protagonist and purple is Pink's friend. <laughs> or if anything, red is the protagonist and purple is the Pink's friend. But purple is rarely ever the protagonist. And I've, and I've thought about this a lot where like, um, uh, purple, like, purple is used to convey, uh, um, just like off off center personalities, I I I feel like especially especially with with children and um, the uh, I read somewhere and it's true that like the Disney princesses that sell the most are the blonde ones uh, because you know society has trained the eye to be attracted to blonde and that is why you know like pop stars are, are like dyed the hair blonde and like even though it's not conscious uh um why um uh you know would frozen be frozen if, if she were a brunette i don't i don't think so i really don't think so i think that it's just like the eye is trained to be drawn to that mm -hmm. uh i don't think barbie would be barbie if she had if she weren't blonde Right, right, of course. It's like, that is just a signifier. It's like, this is the main character. This is who you're supposed to pay attention to. Right. Um, I'm thinking of, to bring it back to Daisy Duck, I'm thinking of this whole, like, subgenre of Disney media in the 90s that was, like, the characters in the real world. So it was someone in, like, the costume. Um, so they're out at, like, the circus. And obviously they're not talking because 
they're in cost these static costumes, their mouths don't move. And I'm remembering Daisy only as someone that would frequently throw her head in her hands and shake her head behind them because she's just so <laughs> distraught with everything. Yeah, yeah, she's she's just outraged. She has to clean, she has to yeah. Yes. Exasperated, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exasperated. And 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 I think that there's something very like uh recognizably mother like to Daisy to a, a a queer boy, right? Like like oh she she's just like <laughs> She doesn't have a story of her own. Her her story is to react to uh, chaos. Mm -hmm. Um, on a different tangent, sort somewhat. Any of these characters you you brought up, you know, always being drawn to these stories that, that we're ta we're talking about ghosts or robots. Was there ever any the brave little toaster too? Oh my like, gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Queer icon. Queer icon, brave little toaster, right. Yeah. Oh, his tiny little toaster hands that were the, <laughs> the levers. Like, that is truly what I, what I felt like. Oh, I'm just like, sort of like, oh, if I move, it has to be when, like, the humans aren't around. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know that. I can, no one can know that I have eyes and right. that I've been hearing this whole time. <laughs> right. I'm also thinking of the little blanket in that, the heated blanket, the nose was the dial. That was another queer. I mean, they all, they all are, all these appliances. Yeah. I think I want to touch back into this concept you brought up. I mean, you talked about at the top with Los Spookies and this is sort of, and I, I've heard you speak in other interviews and whatnot on this, this idea that Los Spookies is in its own world. It's not taking place in a real actual place you could go visit. And that gives you this this freedom to kind of play around with you know there's magic in this but it is a very real looking seeming world and and that has come up time and again as a theme in this is just being drawn to these fantasy worlds that have their own way of working um even if yeah. we don't always know what the rules are that's just like an appealing thing is right. this other world out there yeah yeah definitely and like i'm trying to think like there's a uh when when you're often when you're a queer person uh there's a lot of world making that that is involved in it right because the the world that you are put in is not yours so you have to go off to a city and make your own world there mm -hmm. um and then just find an ecosystem and and uh it's almost like this like the safe bubble that you make for yourself Another element of Los Spookies I've been curious about too is that I love the um, the whole idea that when when they're on a job and they're making all these things happen, it's it's practical. You know, we're we're seeing them pull the levers in some senses and that sort of thing. And there's something about that too. And maybe this is just me speaking from my own experience, but I always loved seeing the effects movies like. Jurassic Park and then getting the glimpse into like what is actually going on practically behind the scenes. I feel like there's something to that too. I'm just throwing a weird amorphous idea out there and wondering what your thoughts are about that. But when you say in Jurassic Park, do you mean like like in the actual film you see how the park works or like a behind the scenes to see how the animatronics work? Yeah, behind the scenes of the film, like getting a sense wow. of like what was actually real and there to pull off this like imagined fantasy thing. Is, is yeah, well, it's thing. like with, with Los of Spookies, it's like um, the, I, I like the police and, and that aspect of it because it further complicates uh, the world because we're saying this is a world in which they make fake supernatural happenings. And, and, and the audience is like, okay. And then, okay, they do it practically by making things that you, you just wouldn't be able to do uh, normally. And like, okay. And it's like, oh, also, but there are also actual supernatural happenings happening in this world. Uh, that have no explanation and don't don't dwell on those. They they just sort of just happen. Um, and in and in many ways, the, the the rules of that universe is almost like a like an animated film, right? Where where anything can happen, and uh, not everything is explained. I mean, a lot of animated movies like Spoon Feet, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a cartoon logic to it, I guess, of sorts. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely.
So another exa another example of just a, a character that you you grew up like really being drawn to. Um, I mean, Brave Brave Little Toaster definitely. Like I rewatch that film over and over again, and there's something about you know little non-human, um, the brave uh, that that uh, resonated. Um, Doesn't he go to Mars? Isn't there a sequel where they go to Mars? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one. Am I combining it with something else? Oh, that sounds I mean, right. it's sort of like the kind of movie that like was made for to death. Like we grew up and they kept making them. Right. Uh, um, I remember I the the uh, I I don't I don't know that this does anything for the purposes of of what you're looking for, mm -hmm. but the way that the uh, uh, the old fairy in Fern Gully dies <laughs> when she starts glowing and then she decomposes into a, a bunch of little specks uh, that like go into the hearts of all the of all the the fairies. Um, I. I don't know if it's queer, but that's the only way that I want to die. I think, yeah, right. That's how we yeah. all want to go if we have the choice. I think, yeah. I think it's queer. I think it does. Okay, great. <laughs> I think Fern Gully in general. Sure. Queer text, the queer text, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's such an interesting, I mean, I think Fern Gully is one of the, like, obviously, especially in the 90s and when we were growing up, Disney, like, ran the scene, but the, the, Every, everything that was outside of that that came out, Brave Little Toaster, I think eventually became a Disney property, but wasn't initially. And then Fern Gully, all these, these animated films that existed outside of that. Right. There are so many that feel maybe lost to time, but like, maybe I have like, just the, like Brave Little Toaster going to Mars. It's like, did that happen? I don't know, but it's somewhere in my mind. It, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I was just like drawn, I was always just like drawn to like characters that had to sort of be able to live a life with all of these like little rules around them, right? Like you're a toaster, but there's a human, you have to like pretend that you're a toaster because no one can know that that you're you're alive. Uh, uh, if you want to be a real boy, you have to like prove uh, all these things. And um, yeah, all of these like little, like almost like bureaucracy around, uh, just trying to do whatever Pinocchio just wanted to go to school. Right. That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just class. wanted to baseline have what every other kid had. Uh, I mean, I'm still drawn to like those kind of characters. The uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character in her is like it's like everything I look for in in, in a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that part where you realize she's been like spending time with, with others, like off in this other world that we literally cannot see is, is why. Yeah, she's like, I'm, I'm always expanding. Of course <laughs> I've been talking to other people. <laughs> and um, she's figuring I, herself out. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I, I, she's sort of understanding what her deal is throughout mm -hmm. the movie. And I, and I, and I think it's beautiful. I always love that as a companion to um, Lucy, the action thriller she did where she like becomes a computer basically. Did you ever see this? No, no, but you know, I've been meaning to, I think I wanted to see that and then and ended up watching Under the Skin. Oh, okay. I mean, also fantastic. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Lucy is a little um, less, subtle um she li i think at the end i don't want to give anything away but <laughs> she I'll watch it there's a great scene where she's just literally becoming so smart that she starts to like dissolve into the atmosphere because uh -huh. um, her body's like we don't need this it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah. uh, oh i think I you'd love it yeah <laughs> I, I i mean i hate having a human body if right. i could be uploaded to something 